I'm nervous right now because I'm really about to be extremely honest, honest in a way that could probably piss off my family. But um, the title of today's topic is let's, what let's means I'll explain later, but it, the, the overall topic revolves around uh, experiencing gratitude in your relationship and in my relationship. Being someone who's kind of gravitated to dysfunction for a large portion of my life, I think that you know sometimes it's difficult for me to actually find that gratitude. And so I'm in a lovely relationship. I'm in a relationship with someone who treats me unreal. And if I were to be 100% honest, um, it wasn't like love at first sight or anything like that. It was like, I'm in the company of someone who is a great person, who I actually find attractive, who I enjoy talking to. Our relationship started out as friends and then over time became intimate. And the truth is, this person consistently treated me so well. She treated me so well consistently that I couldn't, I found it, she made it extremely difficult to run. That's my pattern. I get in there, get hot and heavy, and then take off, but I couldn't. Something in me wouldn't let me do it. I don't know, maybe because of the fact that children were involved. I don't know what it was, but I also think that it was just because I was just being spoiled. Honest to God, it was, I just wasn't conditioned to being taken care of and also, comfortable enough to let people take care of me because I'm such a, I'm such a, I was such a, I was more so back in the days, such a control freak that I, I kind of equated being taken care of to being indebted to someone, you know what I mean? But now you leave it up to me and you let me, I'll take care of everyone. I'll take care of everyone. I'll pay for every dinner for every person at the table all day, every day. For the first time, I actually had found someone that I felt comfortable letting take care of me. Anyway, we've been together going on six years. I love, I love the family she's given me. She's really helped uh, bring my brother's family and I even closer together. And we've already been close, but my, she's really helped make it like something we all look forward to. Even here, six years in, I found myself the other day, I woke up, went to sleep and woke up not really feeling grateful for my relationship. Actually, uh, second guessing, wondering if I was in the right place, doing the right thing. And it wasn't really questioning whether or not I was in the right place. I think that it was really just questioning what my relationship stood for. And, you know, I really want to be honest, I think as an actor, you know, we're just afforded, it seemed we we're under the illusion constantly of being afforded all these different opportunities. And I think that because of that, you tend to get this kind of attitude of, of, of holding out for the next, for the best thing or holding out for there's something better coming in. Um, you know, so, you know, you almost uh, tend to half ass in situations. I've noticed in LA, people will half ass through relationships because they're really holding out for something better. And so it's an exercise in and of itself to not be seduced by this idea. I feel like Oh God, I, I, I'm 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 sure I'm choosing my words because I know that my, my lady could possibly be listening. But I guess I'm, what I'm trying to uh, make the uh, what, what I'm trying to get to is that um, it's this fear of commitment that I had that makes it really had made it really difficult for me to commit to the person that I was with. And when I finally did, I think that I get these impulses to run because the longer I'm there, the more vulnerable I become. The more vulnerable I become, the more I keep looking for excuses to you know, to run. And listen, man, keeping it 100, my, my, my upbringing was extremely off color. Uh, uh, my dad uh, beat my mother repeatedly. He cheated openly. Uh, and she believed that her only uh, recourse was to pretty much do the same. These things made me incredibly insensitive to what it means to be cheated on. You become callous to it. You see it all the time. But uh, at the same time, even though I felt like I had, I, you know, I didn't, it, I didn't have that consciousness to be like, oh man, cheating on someone is wrong, or I didn't have that conscious consciousness. So I, I would, at times, have this insensitivity whenever it happened to someone. Um, but I actually had cheated once in, in a relationship, and. I found myself behaving very much like my father. But the odd thing was, is that experiencing family, you know, how my family behaved, it made me hypercautious when it came to intimacy um, and, and real commitment and even, even, even uh, sex, you know, because in my eyes, 
I didn't want to become what they were. And also in my eyes, cheating pretty much ruined our family. So I really found it difficult to trust. And I think that that was part of the reason I found it difficult to allow people to take care of me. And as I told y'all before, I'm a little nervous, so please bear with me, be patient. Another thing is uh, I, I never wanted to be a parent because I believed that I would end up messing up my kids. I didn't want to put my children through what um, I had experienced growing up. I just believed that I would actually repeat the cycle. And so here I was the other morning, waking, woke up and really thinking about it and just being honest about my relationship to myself as, as honest as I could. And the honesty was that um, for me at the time was that I felt as though I was unclear as to whether or not um, I was in my relationship out of love or out of necessity. And I don't know if you know what that means, but you know, I, I grew up in, you know, with a dad who uh, split from my mom and within three weeks met my stepmother and she was my stepmother. And that was that. When you'd ask him, well, you know, that was really quick. What was it? He said, I needed someone to take care of my kids while I worked. That's what he said. And now they seem to get along. Uh, they seem to, they seem to be in love at the time. I, I, I really mean this. And like, but I wondered if somehow it had conditioned me to be a person who didn't quite know how to commit in love and, and what was I in love out of necessity. And I, I laid there just kind of evaluating my situation. And like I had mentioned before, there I have two stepchildren. And my little man, who is 11 years old and on the spectrum, gets up in the morning, jumps into bed with me. My lady had already went downstairs and he wants to jump into bed with me. He doesn't want anything from me. He just wants to hang out for a second and get a hug. And in that moment, looking at this little dude, I realized that the gift that this little man was, him being on the spectrum, there's so many challenges. Um, he has this thing that's called scripting where he's never quiet and he makes a lot of noise and he can throw tantrums. He doesn't anymore, but he used to throw these huge tantrums and he, his communication is incredibly compromised and he is built to re rebel. And it's, it's like having a newborn or having a toddler that never grows up in some ways. And in other ways, he's incredibly brilliant, but I'm sitting there looking at him and feeling this love from him and this love for him and having this revelation that, oh shit, this dude right here, this little man right here is such a gift to me. And the reason that I say that is because I'm in the process of having my first biological child. And we are extremely excited about that. And the only reason that I feel so comfortable and confident in the type in the parenting style that my lady and I will have is because of this little man. Well, not the only, but one of the main reasons. And it's because this little guy has taught us so much patience. This little guy has taken us to points to where we were so stuck and uncertain of what to do, all we could do was cry. Points of frustration where you didn't know if you were able, if I, I didn't know if I could go another day doing this. Um, but also his world, you know, I got exposed to other children who were also on the spectrum in more severe cases and some less. And it gave me this gratitude for his health and, and, and who he was as an individual and the relationship that we had, because I saw parents that could never have that type of relationship with their children. And, uh, it also, he also gave me an empathy, like he gave me this empathy that I would have never had for parents, for people, for kids. And the thing is, is that because of my upbringing, because of the insensitivities that I experienced in my family, I was extremely insensitive in a lot of ways. I was, I had a lot, I blocked out a lot. I didn't notice a lot of things. And a lot of times I would have conversations and say things in conversations that were completely insensitive and had no clue that I was saying them. Well, I don't have that insensitivity anymore because of that little dude. I also have this gratitude now that I don't have, I still wouldn't have had because of this little guy. But on top of all of that, I have a patience that I would have never had before. I have major issues with social injustice. You know, I was like, you gotta right every wrong. I was that kind of guy. And this little guy changed all the rules because there's no right and wrong when you're dealing with an autistic child. There's maybe a good day and a not so good day, but there's no right and wrong. Um, you, 
he, he changed the rules and helped me to let go of a whole lot. And in all the things that I let go of, um, a lot of it needed to be shed. And the awareness that I gained from this little man, I needed to gain. And the reason I needed to gain this awareness is because I could not have continued through my life as that person and truthfully evolved uh, uh, in my business. Uh, because m much of my business revolves around relationships. Um, I, I, I couldn't have revolved in my relationship. I'm with someone that I genuinely love dearly. Uh, I couldn't have evolved in my relationships with my family, my brother, my, my in-law, so my in-laws, my nieces, uh, my nephews, my cousin. It couldn't have happened without this little dude, this family giving me these things. And so as crazy as this sounds, I want to go back to how I started this whole thing. And how I started this thing was, I was talking about being ungrateful for my relationship. And in that moment, I suddenly realized, wow, I chose this family. I personally clearly chose this family. And I'm gonna tell you a really quick story that helps explain this. Man, about 15 years ago, I knew a director, he'd been married for one year. And in that one year, it was hell for him and his wife. They were, at, they were on the verge of divorcing and he was ready to leave. And he truthfully believed that it was the right thing to do. And so did she. And he went to his rabbi and his rabbi and him sat down and talked for like two hours. And at the end of everything that he told his rabbi, he felt completely just in saying, so, you know, I think we're gonna have to end it. And his rabbi goes, nope, you keep her. And he goes, after everything that I just told you, everything that you know, why would you say to keep her? And the rabbi goes, because you chose her. And let me tell y'all, man, that shit hit me. That shit hit me so hard because the way that I heard it, was not you intellectually chose her, a greater version of you that is seeking to help you heal chose her. Something that goes beyond your immediate understanding, something that might go beyond your immediate intelligence, something that you might actually understand, he might actually understand intellectual, intellectually, but in actual application, in practical application, it might not make sense. And so that hit me. I started looking back on my life and going like, well, damn, I chose this relationship. Now, I might not have consciously said this relationship is going to help me break past a lot of glass ceilings psychologically, or this relationship is going to help me um, uh, e evolve into a more conscious and sensitive person than my parents had been. I don't think that I, I looked at it that way. I just felt like I was being treated incredibly well by a woman that I think is very beautiful and uh, a family that I think is very beautiful. And that was it. And sitting there with my little man the other morning, I realized, oh no, something bigger than me, something bigger than me chose this because I needed to learn unconditional love. And that little revelation led me to this. And this is why I wanted to talk to you. This is what I want to share with my Patreon followers today. A lot of us are in relationships where we're constantly complaining about the person we're with. Maybe sometimes they're not as sensitive as we want them to be, or as intimate as we want them to be, or as beautiful as we want them to be, or as smart as we want them to be. Maybe not as am ambitious as, as we want them to be. I don't know what the case is, what your situation is. I can't speak about your situation, but I will just say that if you have that, you have to understand that if you're with this person, um, something has drawn you to them. And if you've been with them for a while, I think it's naive to believe that you can be in the same company as someone for that long and not believe that in some way or the other, you are mirroring one another. You're in that company because to a degree, something puts you there for the sake of healing. And that's that's my point is that as I look back over my life, I started realizing that every relationship that I had chosen was actually an opportunity to heal. But what I did was, now don't get me wrong, if, you're in a, if, if I was in a situation where my life was being threatened, I'll, I'm at to skip that one. But what I realized was, is every single relationship, everything that I had ever chosen where I was genuinely inspired to be in a relationship with someone, it was an opportunity to heal. And you know what I did most of the time? As soon as I hit that glass ceiling, as soon as I felt that discomfort, as soon as I felt that, that, that challenge, I ran. I ran and I ran and I ran. And what the universe continues to do is the universe continues to back you into a corner. The more that I ran, the more that I continued to back myself into this corner. 
to where I ended up in a situation where I was being treated so well and the responsibility was so immense that I couldn't run. I literally could not run. And through that, I began to learn how to be more sensitive to people's needs. I began to learn how to love unconditionally. Through that, I went from being like, I never want children, I don't wanna mess my kids up, to basically proving to myself that I could show up every day as a parent. And that lack of gratitude, as I speak about mirroring your partner, whether you wanna accept it or not, you might look at your partner and be like, and be like, he ain't nothing like me. I don't know nothing about him. He don't know nothing about me. Or we done changed, we done grew apart. We this, we that. You can say all you want. But one thing I can guarantee you is, if you are a runner like me, you already know what's gonna happen if you bounce. You already know what's gonna happen if you move on. You do, whether you want to know it, admit it or not. A lot of us are gonna consistently repeat this pattern until the universe backs us into a corner. The real challenge is in acknowledging that you're with a person because to some degree, you mirror one another. When you find yourself in a situation, or when I found myself in a situation where I felt ungrateful, after really evaluating everything, and really beginning to understand the role that these people had played in my life and the people prior had played in my life. Maybe that I denied myself the opportunity to grow in those instances. I learned something and here's what I learned. And that's why I titled this live stream, Let's. I learned that when there's something about your partner that you wish were improved, or there's something about your partner that you felt as though, that, or that you feel as though, you, you know, you can't live with. And now, of course, I'm not talking about, you know, abuse. Rather than looking at that partner as you need to do this and you need to do that, I think the real, the best way to approach it, any issue that you may have with your partner, it should be let's. Let's improve upon this. Because the reality is we're mirroring one another. So if you want your partner to be healthier, more than likely you're both together because to some degree or the other, there's an aspect of your health that's being neglected as well. Whether you want to acknowledge that or not, uh, if you're with a partner who's insensitive, it's probably because there's an aspect of you or part of you or a way in which you have that is equally insensitive. Whatever the case is, in some way or the other, you are mirroring one another. Whether the mirroring means that he's highlighting some, uh, you know, uh, an insecurity that you have or an uncertainty that you have, or maybe you're an extremely possessive person, an extremely possessive person ending up with uh, an extremely uh, flirtatious person makes total sense to me because I could completely see how th uh, this behavior uh, really triggers uh, you know, the insecurities. And I could see how that could be, as long as the person's being faithful to you, despite being flirtatious, I could see how these two things, these two dynamics work hand in hand for the sake of healing. But, um, with all of that said, rather than you need to do this, or rather than you should do that, or rather than you, why don't you do this? It really should be let's. Let's get our shit together. Let's let's take a class on communication. So let's take some courses. Let's figure out how to how to improve our health. Let's let's go to rehab. It could be any of those things. But let's. That's why I titled the stream Let's. That's the right approach. Anytime you find yourself critiquing your partner or feeling ungrateful for the situation that you're in, please understand that part of it is because you chose it. And it's an opportunity for you to heal. And you have, you have a choice. You can run, you can give up, you can shut down, or you can step up and approach it as a team or introduce the idea of approaching it as a team. Damn, I don't know why I'm so nervous. I can't talk when I'm nervous, but I hope that this is making sense to someone out there. And that's for the most part what I wanted to share. So the fact that I, I can even talk about this as poorly as I have today is a testimony to something in me that's greater than me, choosing partners, and choosing experiences that are intended to help me. And when you're like me, um, I'm someone who has been fairly successful at business, you know, entrepreneurship. I've been fairly successful in entertainment. Um, 
and it's as if anything that I try, um, uh oh, I hope I'm still here, but it's as if it's as if anything that I try, I kind of do pretty well in, but I would normally hit this glass ceiling. And then when I hit that glass ceiling, I'd move on to the next thing. And this includes relationships as well. I just move on to the next thing because when you hit the glass ceiling, rather than looking bad, I'd rather start something new and be the man all over again, right? Oh man, how'd you do that? How'd you learn to do that? And then I'd hit another glass ceiling and I'd move on to another relationship. Oh, you know, whether it's business or whatever, you know, it's as if the glass ceiling was my was my cue to exit because rather than looking bad and weathering through the storm and possibly growing past it, I'd rather go into something because I knew I could start something else and look good. And people treat relationships like that. I've treated relationships like that where it's like, OK, it's got it's getting tough. Let's move on to the next thing. And it's inhibited my growth. And what I have proven to myself over the years is that this pattern, this consistent pattern of running has just basically produced the same experience over and over and again with a different person, slightly different dynamics, but really when it boiled down to it, the same issues. And I truthfully believe today that I'm actually working past a lot of the issues simply by sticking around. And the last thing I'm going to say is, is that I don't believe that I actually found love. It wasn't love at first sight. What I did do right this time was that I got to know this person as a friend first. And as I was talking to this person, I was like, oh shoot, I'm actually talking to a person who has a sense of purpose, who genuinely values family, who is n a nurturer, a great mom and educated and wants to improve herself. I never really stopped and looked at someone and thought, oh, this person has all these qualities. This might be good for me. No, I was hot and heavy. You come in and there's this spark and all of this intensity. And then I use up that intensity and we use up each other and then we bounce. And you know what? This time, by not doing that and really just looking at these qualities and saying, this person doesn't seem to be dependent on me. She doesn't seem to necessarily need me. I'm like, in fact, she kept saying, I'm just waiting for you to go away. She kept saying that. Just waiting for you to leave. I was like, you know what? Maybe this might be good for me. This is different. Maybe I should try this out. And over time, we, I believe, have built a beautiful relationship and a, a relationship in which I can honestly say, and we can both honestly say that we are growing from. We've hit a lot of glass ceilings. We've broken past those glass ceilings and we're actually treading in new territory. At least I am. I'm definitely treading in new territory. And, um, I'm extremely grateful and extremely excited about being um, a biological father and extremely grateful for every experience that this relationship has brought me. But yeah, um, let's, I think let's is the right approach. When you look at your partner and you're like, yo, why you always got to do this? Why you got to do this? No, 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 no. Let's, let's figure out a way that we can be more because if your partner's there some way or another that you may or may not be willing to see, you're there too. I've had enough of a relationship to say that the dynamics quite often that I'm experiencing in my relationship, I may not have wanted to acknowledge it, but I was in, no matter how much judgment and how poorly I may have looked at someone in those days, the reality is looking back, they were mirroring me, mirroring me in ways that I didn't want to acknowledge. And I'm just challenging you to take a look. And that's all I got. My name's Romney Malco. Thank you. I promise you these will get better. I will not be as nervous talking in the future. If you want to, you know, take a look at this or go further into it, it will be available on my Patreon as promised. And um, thank you for your patience, man. I'm, I'm really just trying to figure this out. And maybe I could have planned this whole thing out a hell of a lot better, but your boy is just nervous. Anyway, deuces.